it's fucked, baby. It's fucked. I am both disturbed and intrigued by this story. I don't want to. Hello, everybody. It's your girl, Jay, and today I am here with my most surprising books of 2023. Yes, I know. It is July. 2024 but your girl had a bout of depression and didn't film anything in 2023 so we are back baby and we are ready to film this video. I have eight books on my list that I'm going to hit off real quick. These are books that I did not see coming. Something about them just made me go damn. So I wanted to share them with you and it's better late than never so here they are. Without further ado, let us get started. The first one that I have is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. When I first read this, it had such low ratings that I went into it with pretty low expectations and it completely blew me out of the water. I loved how every single one of these characters was so unlikable. I really loved learning more about them as the story went on. There was so much tension within this group of women. I ate up every second of it and the ending was absolutely wild. It was so slow paced up until the ending that when it hits it's like what the fuck is going on? It definitely didn't make sense but at that point I just didn't care. I was so into it. The next one on my list is Not Here to Stay Friends by Caitlin Hill. This one I expected to be just your typical YA cute little romance but it was so much fun. I think it's pretty self-explanatory to say that it is a friends to lovers romance. It follows Sloane and Liam who are long distance best friends. Sloane is visiting him for the summer in LA and she discovers that Liam is suddenly hot. He is tasked with being an intern for his father's new reality dating TV show and one of the contestants drops out last minute so his dad is like hey why doesn't Sloane step in and Liam is a little hesitant because he's kind of like always harbored feelings for Sloan and so she agrees and then she realizes that hmm maybe she has a thing for Liam as well so it's like a friendship to lovers YA romance we just love a mutual pining in this house so I really enjoyed this definitely recommend it it is a lot of fun then I have Queen Bee by Amelie Howard and I am not usually a historical romance fan it basically follows a girl who is betrayed by her best friend over a boy and so she gets shipped away to try to repair her reputation now she's all grown up, she's had a glow up, and nobody recognizes her, so she decides that she is going to infiltrate London society with the new name of Lyra, and it is just chaos, and I loved it. Personally, big fan of revenge plot lines. I think they're so much fun. We get alternating timelines, so we get the past where it's Lady Ella and we kind of learn the why Lyra is so angry, and then obviously we get the present where Lady Lyra is exacting her revenge. I really loved the side characters in this as well, and I'm like hoping, praying, wishing that the author will write a companion novel with Church and Zia. I want their backstories really bad but this one definitely shocked me because like I said I am not a historical romance girly but this one I really liked. Okay the next one on my list is a little bit controversial I will not lie but it is R.I.P and it is by Charity B. Um this one is insane. It is insane. It is unhinged and I don't know why I loved it so much but I loved it. It basically follows these two siblings who are raised in a very religious household. They are always taught to obey. They appear to be a pretty normal, healthy family, but they are harboring some very dark secrets. And when I say dark, I truly mean dark. Like, this is a fucked up story, but it is so addictive. I ate it up. Like, I had no idea what this book was about going into it. And to say I was shocked is an understatement. I am both disturbed and intrigued by this story. I don't want to give away what the like big twist is because it's like the whole point of the book but like it's fucked baby it's fucked. I will say that there are definitely a lot of trigger warnings with this book so if it does intrigue you definitely look them up before going into it because it is a lot but I ate it up. 
Next up, I have The Haunted by Danielle Vega. I did not think that I was going to like this as much as I did. I thought it was going to be very similar to The Merciless because all of those books are basically carbon copies of them. So this being the author, I was like, oh, it's just going to be a carbon copy of that, but like throw some ghosts in there instead of demons. This basically follows a girl named Hendrix who moves into a very old house. She is trying to basically run away from her past and something that happened at her old school. She quickly learns from the popular people at school that her new house has a very dark past and as she spends more time in her new house she realizes that there is a dark force lurking around. So she teams up with her very hot next door neighbor to figure out how to get rid of this evil spirit. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of fun. I think that I was more invested in figuring out what the ex-boyfriend did to Hendrix and why she was running away from her past but the ghost part of it was actually really fun as well. It does say that it's the scariest book that you'll read all year, which I don't think is true, but it was still a lot of fun, so I was pleasantly surprised by it. The next book I have is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I think that this one is such a old school booktube darling. I put off reading it so long because I was so scared that I wasn't going to like it and I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was so much fun and I absolutely fell in love with Rook. I think he is such a good character. I also just really loved all of the fae in this. They were so mischievous and it was so much fun to see what they were going to try to do next. I also just really love Isabel's twin siblings who were goats before they were turned into children. I thought they were so freaking cute and I want an entire like sub storyline with them. Margaret, if you want to write another book, I highly suggest twin goat children please. Then the next one that I have is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I put off reading this book for so long because I was so terrified that I was not going to like it, but it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. This was my first Grady Hendrix book and still my only Grady Hendrix book, but I can report that I did like the writing. I thought it was goofy and fun and cute. I think that it was such a good balance of humor and horror and it was exactly what I needed at the time. I definitely do want to check out more from this author so if you have recommendations of where I should go next with his writing please let me know because I was pleasantly surprised. The final book that I have on my most surprising books of 2023 is The Other Woman by Sandy Jones. When I tell you the ending of this book literally blew my mind, it blew my mind. I had no idea that it was going to take the direction that it took but I am obsessed. It basically follows a woman named Emily who meets the love of her life named Adam and she is so 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 excited to start the next chapter of their life together. But then she is introduced to her mother-in-law named Pammy and she quickly realizes that Pammy will stop at nothing to ruin this relationship and it was so stinking addictive. I literally read it in one sitting because I was flying through the pages needing to know what was going to happen next. It is definitely a slow burn thriller but it was so worth it in the end and Pammy is literally the worst human being to ever possibly walk this earth and I loved every second of it honestly. I was so addicted to figuring out what she was going to do next and what horrible thing was going to come out of her mouth. I love to hate her. This is another author that I think I'm going to check out more of her books from because I really really loved this. I was shocked about how much I enjoyed this so that is why it is rounding out this list of most surprising books for 2023. Alright everybody, so those were, like I said, my most surprising books of 2023. Yes, I know it is a little late, but we are here, we are ready to party. I hope you enjoyed me rambling about how surprising these books were to me. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!